Hello, Anna Minyan here. If you have anything vaguely resembling a stable internet connection, you've probably seen this music video already. But if you haven't come back from the dark ages yet, that's okay, because I am here to save you from your pitiful existence. But haven't you seen the billion reaction videos on this already? You don't have anything to add. There is literally nothing you could say that someone else hasn't said before, and you're about two centuries late. And why are you even doing this mainstream video? You just want the views and the subscribers. I agree with everything you just said, except I don't care about subscribers. Only if you genuinely like my content should you consider watching it. I'll say this once, but I won't ever ask you to subscribe or to like my videos. You decide that. And if I'm crap, just Tell me I'm crazy. Yeah. To be honest, I do get that everyone else has covered this music video and it is mainstream, which I ugh. But I like this song and I only cover things that I really enjoy. So even though it has been discussed to the ends of the earth, I do want to make a video on it and I'll try my best to cover different things. Also, I did some research by taking other people's opinions and making them my own. Research, I know. <laughs> um, anyway, although I do like this music video, it is not an endorsement of Riot. I have not played League of Legends because I do not approve of the microtransactions and how grindy the game is. However, that's for another video. I'll just say that I wish that Riot cared more about their players instead of making a profit. Although I have heard conflicting reports of people saying that it is well balanced. So, I don't know. Even though I dislike parts of the game, I really, really like the art and music, which is the reason why I felt so conflicted making this video. Because I didn't want to go, look at this distraction from the microtransactions, and wow, togetherness, you know? But admittedly, it is a very good distraction and well made, so I think I'll buy it. So let's start this analysis. I must preface this uh, first by saying that this song, Pop Stars, is very professionally done. It looks brilliant and sounds as brilliant as it looks. And I really mean that. The animation is so beautiful, the movements feel natural and slick, and the color grading feels otherworldly. But more on that later. Okay, I'll get the most obvious things out, out of the way first that everyone else has already said. Easter eggs. There's Riot eggs. Oh, no, there's Riot logos on the cars, and I'm not really sure how that's an Easter egg, but okay. KDA stands for Kills, Deaths, and Assists. Uh, Posters-wise, we have Rise Worlds 2018, Pizza Delivery Silver, DJ Sona, and Pentakill. We also have a pool party Lulu cleaning detergent that makes a small appearance in the video. Um, I'm not really going to describe the abilities used in the video, but the champions used their abilities in-game in the video, um, which is attention to detail, and I have to congratulate Riot and the people who made this video for that. Uh, this includes uh, Demon Shade, E-Charm, Kill Instinct, Akathian Rain, and Supercharge. Credit to Noxian, uh, Noxarian Law Spotlight's video on that. Watch their video, it's, it's really good stuff. Uh, Noxarian Law Spotlight also mentioned that Evelyn is the only one who is depicted to be in much larger proportions, which got me thinking um, about it, about that. And I don't really agree with their reason, which they said it's because she's the only non-human. I think it's kind of the a, a, pup, a puppet master thing, as in she towers above all else and controls everyone from the shadows, making them dance to her tune. Um, TB Skyen in his video also mentioned that Evelyn is always slightly off center frame and how that reflects her character of being stealthy and the diva who likes to control things behind the scenes. Another thing is Ari is in a laundromat with her pop star and star guardian skins in the washing basket as many people have said. This is because according to the lore, this is set in the same universe as pop star Ari's skin where I quote, quote, after rising to fame as a teenage pop star, Ari tossed aside her girly and young look to reveal her new self, a high fashion, elegant and stunning celebrity. So it's basically Ari washing herself of her previous image to become this sleek, 
high society social life. So touche by it. At first I was, I was kind of confused by that. However, I want to dig, really dig down into what makes this video pop, crackle and fizz with energy and passion. What makes this video one of my favorite music videos in recent times? Well, let's begin. So the first 34 seconds of this is pure bliss. Pure bliss, repeat perfect, pure bliss. Why? I believe it is a parfait combination of visual and audio aspects, plus some spicy editing. We begin the track with something like a siren punctuated by sharp, short and sharp shouts. Visually, I think that the editors in charge of this did a really good job representing this with quick cuts on each shout. Simple yet effective. From an audio perspective, this is reminiscent of popular hits in recent times, but more to the point, this underground punk rebellion. The distorted audio, which is intended to show that they are an offshoot, that they aren't mainstream, yet the shouting shows that they really have the public support. And I think that really embodies this sound effect, which I really love. And if you take that in concert with the visual effects, such as the strobe and the percussion, I mean, the percussion, wow, it just pushes up, it just pushes this up to like another notch with all these aspects together, uh, very popular, which are very popular in trap and dubstep and EDM in general. When you put them together, you've got something that feels really modern and distinctive and lovely design, if I say so myself. And plus, even this guy over here agrees, and he's a music producer, so I must be right. Ooh. He's Joey Na Nato, Nato, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, check him out, he did a video uh, reaction to this. He said it's very dubstepy with EDM snares, and mentioned that they used a soul wave synth to get across that rough kind of feel. And I really agree, especially with um, that kick and snare. It just feels like dubstep, and that's my jam. That's the music I really, really love. Now for the imagery, I really liked the idea behind this first scene. Um, the singers, with the singers like draped over opulent racing cars, this is the very idea of sumptuousness and luxury. It exhibits the fictional K-pop group as mysterious and powerful, and it really goes towards world building showing that this is their everyday lives. But the editors implement something else, very powerful, yet subtle. And that is uh, that within the first nine seconds, the editors cut between all four locations, introducing each of us, each to us, with a small glimpse. And I believe this really helps with the flow of the video because it allows us to, be, to become accustomed to each of the locations. It creates a logic and structure to the video. Because uh, what this says to me is I'll cut between each of the singers in different locations, as I showed to you in the stock. And they follow through on it. Um, so logic makes good videos. Who would have thought? <laughs> Admitted, admittedly, a lot of that is my personal interpretation, so I admit it's not gonna be 100% correct. On the topic of how the video flows, I've noticed that throughout the entire video, the camera movement is always backwards, even for the single scene of Evelyn driving towards Kaisar, creating this sense of seamless movement, like the entire thing is one take. TV Skyen in his video interpreted this as, and the center framing of Akali, as a power dynamic, as in they are always better than us, and we are always moving away from them, whilst only they can move towards us. And, well, he says it really way more articulately than me. However, I don't really agree with this interpretation. I don't believe that that was the message that they were trying to get across, mainly because that's a dick move. Think about it. They're trying to say that they're better than us. It just sounds so horrifying. I mean, distanc distancing yourself and making yourself untouchable to others who like you and want to be you. That just, just sounds like a really malicious act. It's just screwing over everyone else. I mean, get over yourself. No one is better than anyone else. Like, no one. 
And I believe that a creator should always be level with their audience. Trying to show that they are better because they are more rich and beautiful is the way to piss off your audience. And I like people who are smug and confident. I don't like people who say, will say that they are better than any than everyone else. And a quick 15 uh, second lyric analysis. They are uh, in the lyrics like approximately at this time. They say that you want a dose of this and they portray it as if they're a drug. And I thought that was kind of cool. Um, anyway, <laughs> for me, for me, I think this video really ramps up around the four second mark with a low bassy growl of a V8 engine. But I also believe that you could interpret this as the growl of a beast. In fact, if I really look close at it, into it, I think that the editors intended it to be a hybrid of both, to really dig it down into that rebellious, edgy vibe. Also, the, synth synth yeah, the synthesizer just sounds hella cool. It just grabs your attention into the song, gripping you just before it begins. I would be also, uh, I would be remiss not to mention this scene. Like, man, this is so good. Noxian Law Spotlight did show me that this scene here is an Easter egg to the video I Am the Best by To Anyone. Uh, but I think that they really, they actually executed it better than the original music video. Like that metallic clang, just to emphasize the lights. Mm. Ace right there. Uh, talking about a little bit of the video editing, this cut here, this is really nice. The editors made sure to cut on action to Evelyn, and with this motion blur in the movement through the choreography and the speed run. And it just makes, goes uh, towards making the video feel really flowy and continuous. Then we get into the main chorus, and wow, this is really good. Which uses like a B-flat chromatic scale to generate tension. This technique is just so wonderful, and <laughs> I was, I'm just screaming at you, like that's not really a thing. Um, do you really think I'm gonna be going into like throwing music theory at you? I never even passed like grade six A and B. Now this is why I don't do music review. Oh wait, I'm doing a music review. Yeah. <laughs> okay. On a more serious note, I feel like this song provides enough surprise in the soundscape whilst incorporating familiar melodies. As in, you think you'll want to hear a note, but the song will totally surprise you by substituting another note which also sounds good in, it, in its place. Uh, that is the surprise element and is a staple of modern music and music in general. Whilst that is the case, you also feel at home with melodies that you've heard many times before and know off by heart. Also, can we hear that jump? I mean, damn. Can we hear that again? And again, and again. Oh my gosh, that is really good. Just like really, really good. This song kind of manages to feel really contemporary and I'm talking pop music wise with all your snares and this blend of harmonious and edgy themes and sounds. It's just great overall from a sound perspective. I will admit that it's a little bit repetitive, kind of like the songs which took me off liking pop music, but it's catchy and has enough variation that I think I'll give it a break on this front. Exploring, exploring stylistic choices, it works really well to emulate that K-pop vibe, being fictional and all, because it is a K-pop song. One of the music artists slash groups on this song G Idol is a K-pop group, but also because it's so out there and the production of this is sky high. Production value, I mean. It feels exactly like what a K-pop group would do. I mean, it even incorporates the signature fusion of both Korean and English lyrics to open up the song to broader audiences, to a broader audience, and make this song feel more exotic to both audiences. Though I can only uh, judge the English component. I think the music artists on this song really aced it. Like not only is it realistic, but it's actually a hell of a good song, which I would actually listen, listen to and have added to my music playlist. I mean, it's not often that games really get a handle on emulating any professions whatsoever. And it takes a hell of a lot of research, time and money. I applaud Riot for teaming up with these music artists for a smashing hit. 
And that's enough audio reviewing. I think I've fulfilled my quota and I can now officially say that this is a music video review. I think. <laughs> um, okay, now we're gonna cover the infamous, 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 why do I keep saying infamous? Infamous blacklight scene of Akali rapping. I absolutely adore this scene and I believe that it really bring, brings life to this song. So what do I like about it? Well, for one, just before the scene, there's this entire build-up which climaxes in this drop, hyping us up for what is to come. So Akali even says, are you ready for this? Which does the same thing. Apart from that, it just sounds really nice. It's very rhythmic with pauses which keep you hanging on for more. Like this part here. She stops and she keeps on going. And it just, it's really, it's really nice. Really nice way to In the breakdown, I think it's also this pulsing bass, which really carries this forward momentum and complements the rapping. Like, just take this. However, I think I've delayed enough on the most obvious aspect, which is the color. The black light style color. I mean, I just can't get enough of this. It's dark, but also vibrant, and Akali steals the show here. What really stood out for me here was, well, her teeth. The lip syncing here, which is done here, is exceptional. I don't know how they synced it so well, but it would require so much dedication and time. But this attention to detail are what affects this scene. Moreover, it's how expressive the demon jaws are. And I think that's down to the range of different expressions. What I mean by this is that every frame has a different expression, which is extremely time consuming to do, but it leads to a fluid flowing result. I also like how it looks Japanese inspired, like reminding me of how Oni teeth look. Oni? I'm not really sure how to say that. Some other things that I especially love are how the teeth on the face mask pucker inwards, as if she's so self-assured and prideful, and it makes her so much more human. I love how she talk, talks looking towards her shoulder, and how she spreads her arms outwards. The poses clearly display arrogance and like this smug attitude. Yet it is warranted because she's so dangerous. A leader of rebellion, a dragon in the hood. You get what I'm saying. In addition, we've got a really low-key flicker. I'm guessing created with Sapphire Flicker. Why? Good question. Most videos use this to imitate the Super 8 millimeter film cameras, but in this case, I think that it's trying to create the impression that the intensity of the music is causing the aberrations, shaking the foundations of the world with the idol ideology they are espousing. And can we just take a second to appreciate Akali? She looks so sexy and badass in a totally non-objectifying way. Okay, maybe slightly objectifying. However, I think that what makes a character sexually attractive isn't just how much skin she shows, which I will admit is a part of it. Like that shot of her from the back shows skin and is painfully sexy, but also the story behind her. She looks like a blend of colorful gangster and rebellious styles all fused into one. And the fact that she appears in a flicker of lights just makes her all the more alluring. See, she is sexually attracted to all the design choices that are made forming a back backdrop of actual story, which I love. Like how she is lithe, graceful, deadly, but also human. Did I mention that I have a thing for confident, independent girls? Well, I do. And Kari fits the bill. As I'm sure she does for like a billion extra people. She does what she does because like she just doesn't care. And this is inferred from the effortless, self-assured way that she moves. The way she poses so naturally. How powerful and radiant she looks. That, ladies and gentlemen, commands respect. And that is sexy. And oh, damn. Akali swinging her keys whilst trains hurdle either side of her. Whew. That is badass. Like the nonchalance of that, great stuff. Towards the end of the song, I'm having a look at the scene where Ari seems to be levitating with overhead lights and speakers spiraling through vacant space. 
very thoughtful of the animators. Representing this idea that Ari is constantly under the spotlight and essentially lives through music. I like that. It's also a feature unique to the animation medium and they leverage that by using this unearthly scene since they've already chosen an animation to represent their story. That is playing to their strengths. And it's really hard because it's really hard to do with normal camera footage and I appreciate them using it here. I also want to take a second to note the color grading. Like each location has a different color scheme from on the road being your classic blockbuster teal and orange contrast pair, which always works, to the neon pink and dark blue of Evelyn scenes, which kind of remind me of Hotline Miami. There's also your more colorful scenes, specifically I'm thinking about the ones that include Ari, lush and fertile landscapes in the background, and all are aimed at portraying the different aspects of each character and their individual personality. I'll fire off a quick array of comments towards the final section. Like we see the weapons, especially a car. Kari, Kali, Kali. I'm getting confused. It's, it's Kali. It's Kali. Facing backwards, and it reminds us that these idols are dangerous and have this intrigue surrounding them. I just want to talk about a Kali spray painting the trains and how this scene fades into nothing. In my view, this scene functions something like a pillow shot as in there's not too much going on in these scenes, no transitions in the music or the video. So it gives you time to think about what just happened and serves as a foil to the massive explosion of content you just witnessed, accentuating the sweetness all the more. Furthermore, that dance move in the, fi in the finale, oof, great stuff. I believe that this song does use dance, move, dance moves, which highlight how feminine the characters are and how sexy they are. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, it's, it's an entirely valid method. Sex is a part of life, and many K-pop songs do the same thing. In summary, I don't think that I've seen a better music video from Riot. Even with the likes of Get Jinxed and Warriors, this video still feels better. Now, I'll also take, a, take time to cover a few of my gripes with the song. Okay, now this may say, sound really weird, but Ari's nose just throws me off. Whenever I look at fan art, or really any art, of any pre-existing character, I always like to ask myself the question, does this represent the original character? Now I might be being an all too posh connoisseur for saying this, but the nose just doesn't really fit Ari's nature. It kind of just makes her look boastful and arrogant and takes away from that innocent yet beautiful nature that she has going on. The change in nose kind of makes me think that they were trying to de depict Mi Miyun. I'm not really sure how to say that. Or is it uh, so Soyun from G Idol? I can't really tell, but the one who's who's Ari anyway. But I can't really see the resemblance. So I'm thinking that it's trying to make her look more Korean. Though I hesitate to say that because I don't really know about anything about culture in general. And yeah. However, I am willing to admit that this might be just me seeing things. Overall, not a huge gripe. I will also say that the art for the concept art is a notch higher than what we see in the video. Understandable as artists can put so much more time into a single canvas rather than have to focus on animating it in something like Autodesk Maya. It's a question of quantity versus quality. So yes, I do understand. Also in the concept art by Riot Games, um, it actually fi fixes, fixes Ari's nose, so it actually feels like Ari again, so I'm, I'm super glad. Now we get to what is probably one of the worst parts of the video, which is the dance move at the 58 second mark. Just, what? Ugh. Ah, ugh. What is that? Ah, I'm dying. Like, just what kind of dance move is that? It just looks so cheesy. Okay, you may disagree with me here, but what kind of dance move is pumping your fists up and down? Maybe there is some kind of dance move, something akin to that that actually works, but this doesn't. Speaking of doesn't, I feel like this movie, this dance move doesn't suit the tone of the music video. I, I get what you're going for and maybe cheese is what you want, as in the exaggerated comic 
illustrated style movement, but it just doesn't work for me. Okay, one more gripe on this video, which is why is there a video of an, I mean, a wallpaper of an exotic beach in the laundromat? Like, is it trying to represent Ari's insecurity? I don't know, it just feels slightly out of place. Now, so that no one complains that I finish on a negative note, I will talk about an aspect that I find amazing, which is the colorful tails. Spectacular technical work from whoever animated this. I literally have no clue on how to do it. Unfolding of the crystalline tails on Ari is just so aesthetically pleasing. And I think it warrants a mention for how beautiful it is. <sighs> and I think that's about it. But I'll finish off by briefly touching on the backgrounds of this song. So okay, by now you've, you've probably already heard all the news about it. But pretty much Riot Games invited the artists to do a live concert marking the start of Worlds, the World League Championship. Now they decided to implement AR, which I just felt didn't work very well. It just wasn't that great. I feel like AR is the worst clone of VR, and VR still has a ways to go. Uh, this is because AR graphics looks look so much worse compared to footage from real life that the difference just accents how bad they look. The concert was all right, and I was expecting it to be much worse, like 2017 E3 live performance level cringe, people just being like, hey, I just came to sit here to see the games, not this concert music stuff. But from the applause, it seems like people really liked it, so yeah. I'll put a few, I'll put up a few interesting resources that I consulted while writing this video, including the League of Legends short story on KDA and the backstories of each of the characters, which you can read if you want. I think they were pretty good, but not super notable. Um, I'll just put them in the description. Below. In, re in researching for this video, I also did watch a video analysis on this, and I missed a lot of what TV Skyen had to say. It shows what a professional knows compared to an amateur like me. My background is in video editing, but I still have so much to learn. I thought that the motion of the camera with Evelyn in the car was forwards, forwards but I was completely wrong about that. He also picked up the mocap or keyframe animation, which I didn't, and the spectacular blend of 2D and 3D animation to create the final product. He does a really good job explaining the features of the video. Of the video. He's a professional, like, go watch his video. I recommend it. And he does, he does it all off the cuff, like impromptu. It's like oh, a detonation in my mind. I always use a script, like even now, I'm just like reading off the script because it just helps me word what I want to say so I can make my videos concise and direct. Quick interruption here. Um, I just had a few announcements to make before I end this video, which is that a few days ago I turned 18. So yay, happy birthday to me. <laughs> it didn't seem right putting it at the start of the video. Um, also, I'm gonna get a, a new gaming computer, which is really, really, really nice. Um, my dad actually bought it for me as part of the Black Friday sales, and it's got like a 1070 Ti, which is not a 1080 Ti, but still really, really good. And uh, and it has, and he bought me like a $700 screen. Like, just blows my mind. It's so expensive. Like, what? Why did he even buy that? Like, my dad never buys anything that expensive. But I think he just bought it for me because I've just ended VC and turned 18. You know, all that adult, adult growing up stuff. And wait, oh yeah, I just decided to do this video in my school uniform because I, I, I just realized that I haven't really shown you guys my school uniform, so I decided that might as well. Anyway, back to the video, goodbye. With that, I'll probably end off this music video review. Safe tra travels, my friends, and good night. Or good day, I guess, right now. Anime Yan.